is a circular shaped cell. Well, with sickle cell, um, it's a little different. It, the, the cell sickles, like a little C or a little S or whatever. YouTube is your girl Nurse T coming to you with the video. For those of you who do not know, my name is T, Nurse T. Um, I work on a med surge oncology hospice unit and I do videos based on that as well as a little vlogging here and there of my personal life. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. So in this video, I actually wanted to answer one of my subscribers' question. I believe her name is Miss Susie Me. And in this video, she wanted to know um, what type of patients do Nurse T take care of on a med surge unit? She watched other videos and saw that med surge nurses typically take care of heart cath patients, renal failure, pneumonia. Well, in this video, we definitely take care of those video, those type of patients as well. And I also want to get into details about what other kind of patients we take care of. Um, what are some of the nursing interventions? What are some of the treatment plans from what some of the treatment plans are from the doctors? And um, how do we stabilize those patients? But I do want to share with you 10 of the most common top principal problems that we see. And a small disclaimer, your girl not an MD, of course, you're watching the nursing channel. So I will give you my knowledge, my information from my experience of me being a nurse for the last couple of years. So the first one I want to start off with, the one, one of the most common things we see that come are, is cellulitis. Cellulitis is a bacterial skin infection. You see patients that come in with... Um, with symptoms of pain, pain in that area, because they usually present with swelling, um, redness, it's warm to the touch, and pretty much that's cellulitis. I also wanna apologize in advance for my neighbor's dog. She has, she or he has a big dog, and I guess they usually keep the dog in the front, and I'm more like in the back of their house, so I can, the dog is out in the back now, so I can hear all the big, roof roofing so please excuse that <laughs> right now they i think they wherever they took the dog and i hope they stay there but yeah so i would um also continuously try to elaborate more but try not to have this video be too long and before i go any further i do want to touch on like you might hear me use the word signs and symptoms and do know that there is a difference between the two. A sign is what we see as the healthcare provider and the symptom is what the patient feels. The patient comes in and tell me, I feel weak, I feel dizzy, I feel tired, I feel fatigued, you know, whatever. A the sign, sign is, is something that we see. Like when I say with cellulitis, I'll see the patient come in with redness, um, it's warm to the touch, it's, it, it's swollen. Those are things that I see. They're objective, you know, things I see. And the subjective are things that people tell me, the patients tell me, um, I have pain. Pain is subjective. I can't feel your pain. So it's pain is whatever the patients say it is. Um, I feel tired. I can't. I can't see you tired. Well, I can't feel you tired. So it's subjective. It's, um, it's a symptom. It's a symptom that the patient has. All right, now that we got that out of the way, the next one that I will go to, number two, is sickle cell anemia. We have patients that come in with sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is when, you know, the average, um, and I'll try to insert some pictures here, <clears throat> but the average normal red blood cell circle, is a circle. shaped cell. Well, with sickle cell, um, it's a little different. It, the, the cell sickles, like a little C or a little S or whatever. I'll, I'll insert a picture. But with that, the, um, the half-life, the lifespan of those is, 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 is shorter than the normal red blood cells. So those patients tend to have less blood cells that, that will have blood cells that die faster and um, leaving them with a, um, a lack of red blood cells in that area where they're having the pain. 
So those particular patients will come in with with um, symptoms of pain. They have pain, they fatigue, they, um, we check their O2 saturations, they typically have low O2 saturations, and, um, and, and again, the cells are clumping. So we treat that by retreating the clumping of the cells with IV fluids. We IV fluids, um, we give them pain medications for the pain that they have, in, and then typically we transfuse. Usually they're low on blood cells, so we transfuse. So IV fluids, we, um, we, we have to supplement that oxygen, so we give them oxygen, usually two liters or so. Um, we give them IV fluids to help with the clumping, and we um, in pretty much transfuse. So that's kind of sickle cell in a nutshell. Um, also, we have patients that come in with gallbladder disease. Um, I, I'll put the, the name of it on there, cholecystitis. I'll put that on there as well. So with those patients, um, they typically come in with pain as well. So we control their pain. And with the um, gallbladder infection, the, the typical treatment we do is removal of the gallbladder. So the, the, and that's the procedure is called a cholecystectomy. All right, and then also um, with that one, they usually can detect that. They'll do a CT and a HIDA scan, and it shows like if the gallbladder is inflamed, infected, or you know whatever. The next one we see is pancreatitis. With pancreatitis, the most common treatment for that is usually we. Um, we rest the pancreas. We put the patient in PO and we give them, we control the pain and we just constantly just giving them IV fluids to allow the pancreas to rest so that it's not secreting any enzymes as you eat, you know. Um, going back to that, the gallbladder infection, sometimes like prior to removing the gallbladder, sometimes you might have a doctor that just treat it with antibiotics but if it's to, to the, the point, point where, where they need to um remove it then they'll remove it all right so then another one we see is osteomyelitis osteomyelitis is pretty much the infection has gone to the bone you might have patients come in with like some diabetic patients with foot infections or even if you're not diabetic but most commonly seen in diabetic patients but um if, if any area foot or leg or whatever um, you might be experiencing the um, infection or in a toe or a finger or whatever um, that's when the infection has gone down to the bone so primarily um, before it gets to that point it's usually treated with antibiotics and sometimes you know not everybody a fan of having their limbs chopped off amputated so they'll try to treat with the antibiotics first, but if it's to the point, it's to the bone, and it's and if you come, if they're usually coming in re, re, repeatedly over the same thing, the same infection, and it's to that point, they'll go ahead and just amputate. So another thing we normally see, um, especially with flu season, patients coming in with the flu, um, we get patients that come in with um, shingles, with TB. And of course, TB is usually airborne. And shingles, if it's like open and it's um, and they leak in um, drainage, we'll put those on airborne as well. Um, but those are typical respiratory things that we see. Um, and then chest pain. So chest pain, we have patients that come with, with chest pain and you, we usually have a protocol. We do like troponins where we check any um any damage to the heart and this information is by no means like precise precise information on every single thing that we do i'm just kind of touching little points here and there so a lot of the things that i went over there is plenty of things we do there's plenty of diagnostic testing laboratory testing other interventions that we're probably doing i'm just not going so deep into details however if you want a video with some of these um diagnosis that I'm hitting on um, if you want like a little more thorough um, breakdown of what we do just let me know another thing okay going back to chest pain with chest pain 
you know, in nursing school, you will, you will learn the, the acronym MONA, and that stands for more. morphine, ox oxygen, nitroglycerin, and aspirin. So typically when those patients start having chest pain, you wanna make sure that Mona for morphine, that they, they have pain, so you wanna control the pain. Um, the O is for oxygen. Usually that tissue is, is um, having a lack of oxygen, so that's why um, they having some pain, you know. So the tissue that lacks oxygen causes pain. Nitrogen. You want to put a, a sublingual nitrogen tablet under the tongue to help to release, to open the vessel so that the oxygen can flow. And then aspirin. Um, <clears throat> another thing we do when they come in with the chest pain is we'll, we'll, we'll do tests to make sure they might do a CT protocol, a CTPE protocol. Sometimes they might have chest pain, want to rule out that there is a blood clot. Make sure that there isn't a blood clot. PE is the pulmonary embolism, like a clot that could have formed and traveled to the lungs or travel to the heart. Travel to the heart that's causing a chest pain that can cause a heart attack. Um, another thing that we'll do is we'll have cardiology on board. They might want to order a stress test, an echocardiogram, um, and that'll detect if there is any stenosis, which is narrowing of that vessel. And if so, that's when they'll go in and do that cat, the heart cat, whether it's a right heart cat or a left heart cat, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so those are ways to rule out. You want to find out what's causing the chest pain. So another thing patients come in with is shortness of breath. And they can have shortness of breath for any reason. It can be because they might have some underlying COPD, underlying lung problems, COPD, or you might have hemodialysis patients, patients that are diagnosed with end-stage renal disease. And in turn, the treatment for that are, you know, is either you, you, you give them a new kidney or they'll end up on hemodialysis. Or they might do peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal, they do it at home, they do it on their own. Hemodialysis, they go to the facility, they'll be on the machine for about four hours, three hours. It depends on their treatment plan. Um, so those patients are usually patients that have missed their dialysis treatment. And um, over time, it um, maybe a week later, two weeks later, they can't take it anymore. They, they have a shortness of breath through the middle of the night. So they come in for emergency dialysis. Um, or they might have a clotted catheter and they come into the hospital because it happened overnight they can't breathe so they have to get that catheter unclotted and so that's how that's pretty much most of our shortness of breath patients that come in with shortness of breath or they might have an uh, uh, a lung mass or something again some other underlying respiratory situation going on lung situation going on and then last but not least the last two um, and I'm going to tie these two up because these two, we pretty much get these because this is the type of floor that we have. And we also accept these. Not all other message floors probably don't accept these um, as often as we do, but we actually get them on my unit because I work on a message oncology hospice unit. So speaking of that, the next one, number nine, would be... Um, um, cancer. So we get patients that come in with cancer, unfortunately, and usually it's pretty hard. But we take care of patients with that, and we have oncologists, hematologists, um, doctors that, but probably not as often as a typical straight chemo or straight hospice unit would actually see them. But anywho, um, that's it. I'm going to wrap the video up. Hopefully I answered the question. Um, I also want to just thank everybody for the love, the support, for asking me questions, for allowing me to make videos based on questions that you have. Because if you had the question, nine times out of 10, somebody else might have. Nine times out of 10, someone else probably had the same question. Thanks to all those who actually hit the subscribe button. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, please do. Please like my video, share it. Put your girl on the map. Um, if you if you rocking with your brace face nurse, your girl nurse T, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and stay tuned for many more.